Hi everybody, we got another letter from Isabel. This time it's from Madagascar. Do you remember which continent Madagascar is a part of? Let's go ahead and read it. Salama, good morning. Greetings from Madagascar. This morning, as the sun peeks over the horizon, I write to you from a tiny shack in the countryside. The dawnlight glows on the rice fields and I can hear yet another lemur's shrill howl in the distance. I've had quite the journey thus far. Let me tell you all about it. After my ship found land, I studied my map and learned I had arrived at the second largest island nation in the world, Madagascar. It resides off the coast of East Africa. And my goodness, does this place have a story to tell. My first impressions of the island were wild, authentic, and vast. Madagascar is about the size of Texas. We landed in a crystal clear lagoon where handmade boats bobbed in the water, waiting for their daily fishing excursions. Palm trees and colorful shacks dotted the sandy coves and villagers walked about bartering and trading food for their day. The women balanced baskets of fruit on their heads and wore lambas wrapped around their waists. After trading a couple of coins for a small basket of delicious mangoes, I wandered north along dusty roads toward a larger town called Morondava. A lady at the market spoke a bit of English and told me I must go and visit the avenue of Baobabs, a grove of giant trees that are na native to Madagascar. She said they hold a very special meaning to the locals. So off I went. I couldn't miss it. The land turned to shrubby forest and then to rice fields where workers stood in the water to harvest the grains. Something I've noticed about this raw and natural land is the slow pace of life. Not a single person I've met is in a hurry. They all go about their days working and living slowly, just enjoying the moment, it seems. I learned there's actually a name for it in this part of the world. Locals commonly say to each other, Mora, which means slowly, slowly, or take it easy, enjoy. I continued walking along the red dusty roads and curious villagers and children started to walk with me. I don't speak Malagasy, but their friendly smiles told me everything I needed to know. They just wanted to keep me company for a little while. A little boy wanted to try on my hat, so I let him wear it as we continued our trek to the Avenue of Baobabs. We saw oxen pulling carts of rice and fruit and the workers smiled and waved to us as they passed. Suddenly, a family of furry, lanky lemurs hopped out of the bushes and crossed the road right in front of us. The baby clung to the mother's back as she bounced across the terrain, clearly on a mission. They're funny little animals indeed. Did you know Madagascar is the only place in the world you can find them? Finally, on the horizon, I could see the enormous trees towering into the sky. These particular baobabs are 100 feet high and up to 1,000 years old. They're very oddly shaped with extremely fat trunks and short stubby branches at the very top. It looks like they're upside down. As the setting sun turned everything orange, I looked up at the trees and remembered what the lady at the market said. Locals believe that the spirits of loved ones live inside the trees. It's a beautiful thought and it makes me smile. One of the village women beckoned for me to join them for supper, so we ventured to her home where she cooked a giant pot of Ravi Toto, coconut beef stew. Her family gathered and everyone began dancing to Selegi music. I joined in on the fun, eager to practice my new favorite word, Mora. Tomorrow, I'm off to explore another magical part of the world. Till I write to you next, Isabel. And then up here it says, did you know there are approximately 32 different types of lemurs in Madagascar? P.S. Can you find all 10 mangoes on this letter? All right. Let's see if we can find them. Let's go around one more time. They're 
they're hidden in the picture sometimes. You have to look really, really carefully. There's two there that the lemur has, and I see some in the tree, but where are the other ones that are hidden? Okay, let's look on the other side. See any mangoes? This is making me hungry for one of Lucy's mango lassies that she showed us how to make a couple weeks ago. I may have to make one of those. If this interests you, you could do some research. You could draw a map of Madagascar figure out which side of Africa it's on, which ocean is it sitting in, which countries are it closest to. You could research about the baobab tree, draw a picture. You could write the information that you learned about the baobab tree from the letter. You could learn about lemurs. There's 32 different types in Madagascar. Maybe you could find out about some of them. Maybe you want to know more about mangoes and where mangoes are grown, how they are grown, what foods they're used in. Maybe you'd like to draw this flag and research the parts of a flag or what the colors symbolize. Lots of things that you could research just based on this letter from Isabel. I'm excited to see what you do with it. Bye, everybody.